Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric Procedure here, CR Wrestling Commentary. We'll be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34 Day 4. And uh, this was, it was fine. <laughs> There's missed and or lost potentials or something. But we'll get into that and quickly. So this is B-Block action. And it's starting to separate out. Yep. And it starts with uh, Bolton Oleg versus Hiroki Goto. So Oleg is one of the strong men types in pro wrestling. He, he gut wrenched Goto left to right about three times each before hitting the gut wrench suplex. Yeah. Goto it, didn't really go with that move. No, nah, he was just being wrenched about. And it was impressive. But I'm like, that's a energy expenditure. And it and it showed later. Yeah, you're spending a lot of energy now. Granted, let's say if it was an actual combat sport, he'd have been jerking up on his abdomen, costing Goto as much breath as he is expending his endurance. True. Had he been wrestling someone smaller, it might not have been as much of an expenditure. But Goto is a Goto. Mm. Goto is a stocky something. Yeah. He, he ain't small. Mm -mm. He's bottom barrel least, I would say, 227, 230. Yeah. Uh, so Oleg is strong. He did a front drop kick so strong, the sound cut out until he got up. What in the world? <laughs> he drop kicked him and it went, it went quiet. He did, did not, not did not want to hear Goto holler and scream and writhe and roll all over the place. He did not affect the sound. There was some technical difficulties either with their audio of the audio of the recorder. <laughs> I I think it was dramatic effect. Like you watch the movies and something blow up or a gunshot next to someone's ear, and then you hear that ringing that they do. Look, if they're not gonna do that for <laughs> for Jeff Cobb or Sonata, then they're not gonna do it for Oleg. <laughs> I just, you know, just dramatic effect. Okay. He gets no drama. <laughs> a dramaless Oleg. He's got to earn it. How's he going to earn it? We got to see him a few more times. We have seen him a few times. Not enough. Okay, so Oleg get a nice fireman's carry front slam for a two count. Go to a plot, a rolling crucifix hold, which wowed the crowd, but that was for a two count. Then Goto hit the GTR, got the pin for his first points in the tournament. And that's what's bugging me. This is his first win? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. I mean, one before. Goto, they're putting him out to pasture. And English commentary going on that is saying that Goto is like, I'm not going to let the new generation run all over me and all this other stuff. And Goto is part of the generation of, of when Tenz, Tenzan's was ending. Tenzan, Nagata, and all of that. When it was getting to the like, y'all aren't going to be world champion anymore. You might as well face that. Yeah, Tenzan generation kept New Japan afloat. Goto generation brought it back up. Yes. That was perfectly said. Yes. Um, let's see. Next, we got B-block action. It's all B-block action. We got Ren Narita versus Jeff Cobb. Oh, man. I want to skip the intro, but see the notice... Ren leaving the ring in the dark and darting off. So Ren attacks Cobb from behind in the middle of his entrance. And then Ren found it just highly, highly humorous. Yeah, he was laughing. Whooping, whooping his ass down the, down the, the, the walkway and just, ha, ha, ha. Ren, mean, he Ren I, I think he's found himself. He was tickled. Yep. And he even came up too. He's a lot heavier. Yep. And I, I think he's really, he's found himself as, as, as a heel. He, I'm mm -hmm. like, I think he done found himself. He's a baddie. Outside, they fight and Cobb performs a front suplex that sends Narita into a row of chairs. And I had to note that this was perfect. Cobb did the thing that he, 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 he set things up just right before countering Narita. He threw him backwards overhead and Narita landed perfectly on the seat of the chairs. That was an extreme amount of accuracy and care because it could have potentially gone terrible. 
it's amazing that in AEW, Cobb is like barely accurate on anything. But he, but in New Japan, he's accurate, highly accurate, and and safe without even looking safe. I, Environment it, is important. Yes, it must be. It's very important. Ren got a chair and was going to lay in the Jeff, but Marty Asami leapt into the air, taking the, taking the weapon away. Marty jumped. He he getting people's faces. He do. He had to. He came off his feet. Yep. And you're a little dude, but you're a stocky little dude. He mighty bite. Ren works the leg very well, breaking Cobb down over the course of the match. Ren gained a nice rolling knee breaker, forcing Cobb to struggle and grab the ropes. In order to force Cobb into the ref, got the weapon. Cobb took it from him. The ref took it from Cobb. In order to low blows Cobb, hit the two-handed face buster, and scores the pinfall victory. I'm telling you, Ren had a plan and he executed it it was nice you know a seasoned vet couldn't have done it better i when that match was over i was like i don't get that sense that Cobb should have won no i mean because ren did his job he showed up for business and he didn't mess around yep and job job (laughs) let's not tell everybody what he did and Cobb looked like, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm trying to do this, but, you know, this wheel is giving me trouble. And yep. Ren is giving the wheel trouble. <laughs> it looked right. It just looked so right. I, I'm, I was happy with that match ending. I'd rather Cobb win, but... I'd rather Cobb plow through everybody. Yeah. Not, <laughs> you, yeah? Cobb can put a beat everybody in this tournament and it looked legit every time yeah Hanare even Hanare because mm. Cobb is so strong he is so accurate he can snatch you out the air and he, a couple of slams and you're going to be like Woo! and by then to the islands get him some Demerol <laughs> So next we got Yota Suji versus El Fantasmo. I don't feel the need to skip Fantasmo's matches right now. No, I just there, don't feel it. There was no need to skip, but this match was basic. Yes, but not bad. It wasn't bad, but it was like it's, it's it was basic on a level you felt it could have been shorter. Yes. Um and I wrote a very standard but well done match for the first half. ELP hit a swan dive body press from in the ring to the outside over the railing, and it seemed to have jammed his knee some. It took a bit, but Yoda applied a, an elevated inverted clover hole, but ELP got to the ropes. If he had fell back and got the and got the body scissors, that would have been a gorilla clutch. Uh, they did a low level strike exchange that didn't help either of them. They they turned up the heat a little bit as ELP hit a tornado DDT rolled into a suplex attempt. The Yoda preemptively counters into a Falcon Arrow for a two count. I thought that was a nice little spot there. Mm-hmm. ELP climbs the ropes under Jado's orders, but Yota cuts him off and gets on the very top only to get knocked down. ELP tries a diving body press, but Yoda got the knees up and Suji rolls him up only for ELP to reverse that roll up into one of his own and get the pinfall victory. There you go. And I'll be honest with you, I made that sound a lot better than that match was. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I'm sort of just going through the motions right now. I am, I'm tired. I'm tired. It's 4.33 p.m. and my sleep schedule is jacked all up. Um, okay, so then we get David Finley versus Hinati. Um, I'm going to just say this. Hinata threw a spinning back hook kick that oh, looked amazing. Oh, my goodness. It was, if, if it had hit him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, if it hit him, he'd been dead. If it had hit him, oh, man. It was so pretty. He would have Goldberged him. It was so pretty. And he snapped it off, too. Yes. 
you would not think Hinata can move like he do. Mm -hmm. um, they started off fever pitch, but after uh, laying in some heavy strikes, they slowed down as they should. They do things here and there with Hinata controlling most of the match and pacing. Then they pick things up, hitting their signature moves. Finley counters a corner shining wizard into a powerbomb hold for a two count. Then Finley counters a spear into a vertical suplex hold drop into a knee lift for the three count and his first points in the tournament. Okay. And I was, I was kind of like, huh, suplex knee lift. Yeah. Huh. You know, <laughs> thinking about moving for Fire Pro. Right in the chest, yep. So then, <laughs> we're, just, we're just watching everybody, okay? We're just watching. Normally, I would announce certain things, but I'm not in this one. Uh, so next, okay, B-Block action. Konosuke Takeshita versus Yuya Wemura. And I was like, this match got main event written all over it. That's what I was thinking. This match, like these two right here, mm -hmm. they could really throw down if they had to. Mm -hmm. um, and then ring announcer getting started, he says main event. I was like, oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Final match. Okay. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you all this. They worked to not have that five-star match. I could see it. I could see it. I was like, this is beautiful. They are literally doing their best to not have an epic match. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is good. Um, but I was like, Yuya controls the feeling out part of the match. So he's in control. Now I'm gonna tell you who called the match. That's Konosuke. He called this match. He led it. Uh. Uh, Hold up. Get the air trapped all up in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just... <coughs> oh, it's just... Okay. Oh, that's just going to be in there. I'm going to work through it, though. After sending Takeshita to the outside, and this was odd, Yuya does a plancha that could have... that Actually, it would have missed. It would have missed him by at least eight miles and, and about three thumb lengths. <laughs> But and that but it was and it was just so Kadoske could pop him with a forearm. And I don't I don't agree with that setup. It could have been done better. Yuya could have left and Kanosuke should have moved back and landed the forearm. At least it would have looked like Yuya was trying to hit him. Hopefully they look at their matches and they see stuff like that. Hopefully, hopefully that was like. Honestly, I thought, why did Takeshita move? He should just stay where he was and let him fall to the ground. He'd be like cooking your food and never tasting it. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> if you already know it's burned, because that's crash and burned, mm -hmm. just let it, you know, just throw it in the trash. Steak shouldn't shouldn't be black and, and your green shouldn't be equally black. Just, just it's, it's done. Feeding, What's all that fire? You know, you're feeding folks carbon. That's what it is. You're yeah, taking it back to the base element. Carb, carbon diet. <laughs> so, um, outside the ring, Kanosuke delivers a sheer drop brain buster, but fully protected Yuya. Yeah, it was nice. <sighs> Y'all, I don't fully agree with that. I'm gonna tell you why. Because the camera angle they had. Showed that Konosuke never let Yuya touch the, the, the floor or anything close to it. And see, that is the problem. Not the move or Not the, the, move. the execution, but the placement of the camera cameraman. Yes. Yeah. They, they, and, that if, was, and unfortunately, they, they don't know where them fellas are going to run up and stand. And the crowd watching right there might have to question what they saw. Mm -hmm. They have to go back. If they have recorded it, watch it, then they'll be like, oh... So if they're watching with those eyes, they could be watching with complete fan eyes. True that. True that. Um, so Yuya, he got into the ring at, on 18. And I wrote that because they're always trying to tease the 19. It's like, it's not going to be a count out. They don't do that. Yeah. Not, you know? But you know what? If Yano was in it, there's a 20% there's a chance of a count out. With the tease, always teasing the, the count out, when there is one, it's like, dang. 
There was a count up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's true. It's that's true. The, that's the only drawback of Yano not being in the G1. Because Yano's matches. They are comical. They were always entertaining. As much <laughs> as it it did great on uh, me and some of the viewers' nerves of Yano doing what he was doing. I'm going to say this. It, you got to admit, it added a lot of comedy. Mm-hmm. A lot of entertainment. And then you... You wonder how they're gonna get out of this. Yeah, that's how are you gonna survive, Yano? How was you know? And that, that, Yano and that was gonna it. lose. It was surviving Yano to get a win, and mm-hmm. folks had to have different strategy. They had to have a secret, separate keys or or <laughs> scissors for the tape or making, their making own the ref, tape, making the ref check for extra tape. Yeah, they, I, <laughs> I, I I like that. I thought that was good. It's just having to go out to the ring and then go up the apron. I mean, the the aisle all the way to the entrance. All that got tiresome. That's where I was like, I don't like this. Um, it's a method. <laughs> it, yeah, it's <laughs> that's kind of what it boils down to. It was a method. Okay, I wrote Takeshita controls the match with a slight hope spot that he shuts down with a leaping knee attack, and they keep calling any knee attack he does the power drive knee because they don't know what it looked like. Yuya takes over with great counters and a high angle Unadi suplex. So Takeshita does an avalanche suplex that has look y'all. This this uh, Takeshita does an avalanche suplex that has to stall as he had to reclaim his balance. And I had to note Takeshita is a freakishly strong and in control of himself person. Because he lifted Yuya, and you could see Takeshita easily. Okay, I got to get my foot in here. Mm-hmm. He could have just suplexed him. He's like, no, I want to do it right. Mm-hmm. So basically, he held him up on one leg on the top rope and didn't lose his balance. He just adjusted to make it righter. Yep. That's it. Not right, but righter to make it better. So Takeshita is awesome. I'm, 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 I think I'm fanboying it out for him. Yeah. I, I, I'm seeing way too much awesome. It's always been there. I saw it back in AEW. It's just, it, it, it's to a point, and then it have to stop. Yep. It was like, you know, why go above and beyond <laughs> when nobody <laughs> else is over there? So what's the point? <laughs> now, what, 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 to catch the does a topic on here that ends with a clothesline, as you, 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 you did not have to move at all. So when Takeshita hit, it was basically a, a a somersault net breaker drop, basically, is what it almost looked like. It it, it was right. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was like, this guy is I was like, this guy's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to note that Takeshita's arm had been giving him some trouble since early on during the match. And this is his left arm, mm-hmm. not the right, that was uh when Cobb suplexed him. This was no, was he it? Was, no, he it was, was nurse Ocon? I don't or remember was which Cobb? one it was. I don't remember which one. He was nursing one arm half the match and then something happened to the other arm. And after it happened, him and the ref talked back and forth for a second. But things continued, then he was nursing that one. So some some something was going on. Something. Um, outside, Takeshita hits the post with his forearm, and Yuya goes to work on it with drop kick into the railing where Takeshita was convalescing. That that was I think that was it. I think that was the, no that that was that wasn't the spot. Okay, it was something. Yeah, I can't remember. something happened. It was before that. It was before that, and I'm just like, it, it, and the thing is, it could be something so simple, you know. Mm-hmm. That shouldn't be it, but that was it. He could have thrown a forearm that just did something. Yeah. He could have strained or sprained his rotator cuff or could've, something. Could have stepped wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like when you just you walk around the house, you step that weird way. Your knee is like, well, we're gonna hurt for a while, or your ankle is like, well, you did that to us. You know. Just, yeah. Um. So back in the ring, Yuya presses the offense with attacks in the corner and a diving crossbody for a two count. Upon the kick out, Yuya applies a cross arm breaker and when Takeshi nears the ropes, Yuya switches sides but cannot keep Konosuke from the ropes. 
Kanosuke fires up and they got back. They go back and forth with heavy hits with Kanosuke turning his back to boast only to get a released German suplex on his head. But he rolls with it and he hit a thunderous lariat. He leveled Yuya. Kanosuke hit the blue thunder bomb for a two count and then Yuya hit the dragon suplex for a two count. They fired up. They were firing up. Yuya missed the frog splash but countered any offense with a Pele kick. Then I wrote a note right here. I said, I just realized I'm taking more notes than I need to. I will. <laughs> that's what I was doing. I was, I was like, what the? I was like, I looked up. Those aren't the matches. I've been writing this crap. What Damn the hell it. are you doing? <laughs> you can hit a counter Huda Karana for a two count and then apply the flying cross arm breaker. You can hit the frog splash this time before two count. The fans are solidly on his side. They are cheering his name. They are clapping. They are stomping. They want Yuya to win. Yuya finally hit the double arm front suplex hold for a three count. The crowd pops. They are happy. Takeshi was doing what he could to kick out. He made that move look legit. Mm -hmm. It was a perfect finish. And I had to know that Yuya won his first main event G1 match against an amazing wrestler who is Takeshi Kanosuke. That's how I ended that. Because I thought that match was amazing. It was. It was a damn good match. It showed everything. Those two having a rematch for a belt. Oh, that'd be so good. Oh, my God. That would be good. That would be. Talk about that. They would pull out all the stops then. Uh huh. All the stops, all the yields, all the one way. They both proven <laughs> that the bare minimum they can carry a match. Mm -hmm. They can carry a match. They can work body parts. They work well together. They fired up on each other. Yuya is stronger than he looked. And Kanosuke. Found that out with that German suplex because Kanosuke was supposed to land a certain way, but Yuya threw him. Because Kanosuke, I could see him jump with that German suplex, but Yuya was like, "I'm trying to, I'm trying to lift like someone that's probably about fifty pounds heavier." Mm -hmm. And Kanosuke landed very high angle. He very high angle. It was scary high angle. Yes, when he landed, I thought he overextended his neck and probably broke it or dislocated it or something. I I was instantly concerned. Luckily, they worked their necks. Yes, feverishly they worked their necks. So that's going to do it for us, all right? So it's been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary for New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34, Day 4. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And we'll see you next time.